this. Okay, I got it. You should have just, did everyone see a yeah, recording yeah. has yeah. been started? Yep. All right. And so I very blessing, do you see that? I just put that first metric in there. See that first row, Sean? Could you click on that? Yeah. This this first Over row here? All right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 This. I just, on a quick thing. search, maybe this metric is applicable in this case. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Anything else there? All right. Let's talk about all things open. Um, I know a number of us. Not me, but a number of folks are going. I think Elizabeth, Matt. Uh, I think there's a might be a few other people. Yep, I think Ildico's going. Mm -hmm. And that's in. Uh, is that next week or the week after? It's week after next week, isn't it? It's like yeah, it's like in ten days or something. All right. And I think um, I know Elizabeth is, isn't able to be here today, but uh, I believe she may still have some tickets if anybody wants to go. <clears throat> Yeah, so I think what came up last time is if we actually have like a QR code at the booth, where do we point mm -hmm. people to? You know, that's, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I think getting it. people involved. I think people getting engaged in the. Yeah. If you send them to Slack without the context of the website, that might be confusing. Um. I mean, we could just send them to the main page. That's just, but then we don't need a QR code. <laughs> just chaos.community. A community. Yeah. And is that, yeah. uh, unless there, um, there's a, let's see, community. I'm just looking through to see where the, like the Zoom links are. Uh, We have the discourse site linked here, but we've also discussed um, sunsetting that. We are. So yep. Maybe we should send people to this and ensure that there's a Slack link in place of the discourse site. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, and it's also at the bottom of every page. Is it? Well, yeah, if you go to scroll all the way to the bottom. Keep okay. going. See, on that GitHub, like they're the icons at the bottom. Oh, the Slack icon I see in the footer. Yep, I didn't, I did not notice that. Okay, okay, very blessing. Yeah, we can, yeah. I mean, it's easy enough to do the QR code, not a problem. And I'd say point people to this page and uh, yep put the Slack link up there because I think that's how most people get involved yep. initially. <clears throat> that seems to make sense. Anything else about all things open from the all things open participants? No, I'm just arriving and going with the flow. No. So, <laughs> sounds, that is. Sounds, sounds like a real good plan. Yeah. Um, so who would, is there somebody that would have the action item for getting the QR code built? Uh, oh, I think just Elizabeth or I, you know okay. what I mean? All right. Okay. She and right. I, we're doing, we're, we'll be at that booth or table or whatever <clears throat> it is. All right. Awesome. Um, next on the agenda is Augur Software Community. I just wanted to make folks aware that we're going to start meeting every other Thursday at 10 a.m. Um, Starting this that'll week? Start, or... that'll, start this, that'll start this Thursday, October 5th, yes. Okay. And the focus of that community initially is going to be um, onboarding the folks to develop uh, API endpoints 
that reflect chaos metrics and also to map the existing endpoints in our documentation to the, the permalinks we created earlier this year. Um, many of the metrics already do map to, many of the API endpoints in Augur do already map to a chaos metric, but the links are broken because we've changed our URLs, but now we have perma URLs, so it's a good time to go through and update them. So a lot of uh, both very, very beginner level stuff and um, also coding level stuff when it comes to building out new APIs. So I welcome and encourage anyone who has a even notion of interest or curiosity to come on this Thursday. And I did I did place that meeting on the chaos calendar. Okay. <clears throat> Probably announce this. Um, could you announce this oh. in general too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Since I'm sharing my screen, I'll do all that after the meeting. It's not German prey. Okay. Um, I, I would say for the people, anybody with an interest on this call, this is a, we've been working over the years to find a variety of different ways to connect people with software. Um, and so Mary Blessing asked, this is written in Python. Yes, Augur. Yeah, yep. It's dominantly written in Python. Um, SQL knowledge is also quite useful. Um, and anybody who's familiar with um, writing API documentations in YAML, documentation in YAML, uh, so like documentation skills, Python and SQL, those are the three the three skills that you either, you know, if you can start faster, if you have them, or you could use this as an opportunity to develop skills in one area or the other. And we'll take, uh, you know, the asynchronous questions. I think we can concentrate in the auger channel and Slack. So we'll have this meeting every couple of weeks, but yep. for as asynchronous work, we'll, we'll be in the Slack channel. Um, you probably want to connect with probably Elizabeth too. There's maybe a few things we need to like update on the website, not just the calendar. And maybe okay. these be things that you sort out in the first meeting, like what the common Google Doc is. You know, like when you clicked on that join chaos, we have all those tiles. Yeah. Like different like yeah. those things. Yep. Um, so I was also saying that I, I think this is a really good way for people who are interested in software development to get involved. So it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't take on the entirety of Augur, which can be, I think, overwhelming. Sometimes. Yeah. Not just Augur, but yeah. any piece of software that you're not totally familiar with. And so just yep. working on the the APIs, the API endpoints is a really, I think, a nice way to get involved. Yeah, it's the, it's work. kind of the bound. I think API endpoints are really the boundary between the metrics development and the implementation of software. And because offered, because Augur does offer a RESTful API, it, there's essentially going to be a one to, to one mapping between a metric and an endpoint. And I think that makes the logic of the software metric and metric model connection more transparent and accessible. So I think it's an opportunity to move into yep. the development world if, if you haven't been there or to contribute to the software world if you are there and want to. Yeah, so I <clears throat> really encourage people who have a slight interest to to join. And that, you said the meeting is 10... 10 a.m. Central Standard or Central Daylight Time right now on Thursday, every other Thursday. Okay. Okay, great. All right, awesome. And then could you and, skip to the... Are you done there? Skip, yeah. Skip to that one, because then we'll shut yep. stop the meeting and we can... Anybody who wants to stick around for the FOSDEM. Perfect. Okay. Whoever put that in there. I'm Welcome. guessing Ruth. Oh yeah, me. Sorry. Um so we got a reach out from the folks that built this Taliban 
to add um i think i had this conversation with matt last week to add the chaos projects initially they wanted to do it with a space or an x space with chaos africa but another request was also to add um the chaos project to their list of open source projects so they have like a platform um listing out open source projects that contributors can participate in and Should i click on the uh, link peculiar shared yeah i can i can also like probably share my screen because i tried to oh. also <laughs> sorry explore the platform itself yeah oh do you want to share your screen sure i will stop sharing and you may share yeah, Toblian, thank you, Enoch. I keep calling it. Sorry. Toblian. Um sorry, one minute. Um okay, I have a message. I'm sorry. Um okay. Do you see the screen? Yes. Yep. Yes, we do. Okay. Yeah. So they have a. What I call it a platform. Yeah, platform. So they have a platform where people can find open source projects. Um, I just signed up on this. I haven't explored it to some extent, but um, people can look for uh, I think projects here and find projects to contribute to, let me see. So I wanted to, I think Matt mentioned, I bring the conversation here as well. So people can find projects that they want to participate in or contribute to. And then it pulls from GitHub to show their open issues. And then people can see the issues that they can pick up to solve. So a question I have for you, Ruth, is why do they need like our approval to show this data? It seems like a lot of this is publicly available anyway. Yeah, I, I haven't thought of that. Um, but I guess um we would have to make requests. I think I think the process is to have to add the project ourselves or something. Right, I will I will confirm that. I see. I okay. Ask that question. Okay. And it, is there um, is there like is it really just us saying yeah we're a an open source project and we we're happy to you know kind of publicize what we do via your platform to encourage developers? Is that really it? One thing I, I think, I one thing I sense is that um, to some extent, um, I feel that they would need some form of maintainership, like, because now these projects out here, they're like really popular projects. No, there's no, I, th I think there's no dedication from from the maintainers here, but I think reaching out to us, I think they also do need some form of like maintainers that would, because there's also like a question part here um, where people ask questions as well. So I, I don't know if they do want us to be responsive in some sense, but the basic, I think that the apps was to add the chaos project into their platform but what i don't know <clears throat> is they want us to like why do they need us to approve it okay i'd be it sounds like mostly a courtesy to me yeah then i've got zero problem i don't know that i we should be monitoring another channel if it integrates with our existing channels, maybe, um, like as a, just on that last point that you raised, Ruth, um, 
you know, like we're actually getting, we're sunsetting discourse because it's a channel <laughs> that we, <laughs> that we weren't really using, but it was, there was an expense of maintaining it. Um, and right. we actually did the same with the mail list. <laughs> like we sunsetted that as well because there was an expense in maintaining it. So I don't know what your thoughts are there. Like if this if this shows <clears throat> thing from our Slack channel, it looks like it's only Discord though. Yeah, I think this Discord is their Discord. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So would like if somebody had a question, is it only posed on their platform? Yeah, so the question is only posed here. So I see. I think maybe these are general questions, like people just pop in questions here. But I do not know to some extent if um it will be project specific questions, or maybe I'll clarify that. Okay. But yeah, if I mean if it really is a courtesy, as Sean points out, it sounds sounds good to me. Yeah, I don't I certainly don't object. <laughs> um doesn't sound like they're asking us for uh... money. <clears throat> I'm 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 so curious about what Tablia and does and how different it is from um, GitHub where we put our repositories. Even the fact that looks like there is a section for discussions here where people have to come and ask maybe about particular projects and um, have their issues resolved. I'm much raising um, a very good question: like who 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 has who should interact with these questions that are being raised here. But then to I'm my head is so now curious to understand the real the real point behind um this whole platform, whether um uh, it's something that is going to take our other resources in terms of like human resource also and time, or it's just them clicking a but a button and um every project of ours that's public goes onto their platform and we don't need to care about any other thing because. I've seen somewhere on a project where a project lists like um, issues that are still open and to be worked on. And I'm wondering if uh, maybe I'm interested in a particular issue and it's open. Does that lead me back to GitHub or does that, um, that is that all going to be solved in here? I'm just so curious about the whole workings of uh, this platform and uh, what they're trying to solve that is different from um, what's on GitHub. And I'm not trying to downplay it, but my curiosity is. Uh, I think. Has um, been... Yeah, I get that. Um, so one thing I I understand is maybe one problem they're trying to solve is findability, because um I think from exploring the platform in a few minutes, um I can see that you can kind of tailor it to find what you're looking for. Um, I know that on GitHub, you can search by topics as well, which is quite helpful. Um, but here, I think it's also, they're also building a community component where you can get help from other people. I think they also like have like um, some AI component where you can ask questions or even like find jobs. So I think basically they're trying to kind of make things easier for people to find projects to contribute to at the basic level um but yeah to your question to your comment about human resources if it will take um some form of human resources for us i think that's something we have to probably be clear on right um if it's just to put the projects in here okay but like do we need to somehow watch this or do we need to you know have some yep. form of effort on that end. Uh, yeah, because I could see I'm trying situation. to see if it takes you. I could see a situation where if we have to monitor it, <laughs> that we would not. We would not be able to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and I don't want to have people join and ask questions, and they just. Oh yeah, it know. takes you to GitHub. Oh, okay, well at least it takes you to GitHub. That's good. So, 
because it wouldn't make any sense to have a yeah a github conversation around an issue and then a another conversation around an issue in a totally different location so that's at least good oops somebody um Okay. Looks, I, so I, I think I'll yeah, you confirm. Can you that. hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I, I'll confirm those details and just kind of like get back to y'all. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Ruth. So, okay, so um I think we're gonna start. We don't have a ton of time. We only have 13 minutes, but I think we're going to end the community call here for folks. And if I think we usually, and we stop the recording um, and then we spend a little bit of time talking about our next chaos con, which is going to be in FOSDEM. So you're, everybody is welcome to stay on, but this is kind of a, you know, 15, 20 minutes while we're all available to talk about FOSDEM. So if you were only here for the community call, thank you. It's great to have you here. Do you want to stick around for FOSDEM? Great. Let's stick around for FOSDEM. So, so Sean, do you want to stop the recording? I will stop the recording. <laughs>